this bleh. Hello, welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today I have a really fun fabric haul for you guys. This haul is from my trip to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where there's a lot of really awesome fabric shops. I only went to two, but there are like so many in the area. There's like 15, I think. Um, but I mainly focus on ones with garment-based fabric because that's what I personally prefer to sew with. Uh, I can find quilting cottons here pretty easy or kind of all over the US pretty easy. Uh, but Lan Lancaster specifically had um, like garment cloth. I did take footage in the store. So we're gonna start by hopping into that and then heading and doing, I'll show you a haul at the end of this here in Seattle. So let's hop into that footage right now. All right, we are at Fabric Mart. I'm very excited. Uh, I look at their stuff online all the time. I think I've ordered from them a couple times. So I am pumped to go to Fabric Mart. I promise I'm not driving. I'm in a parallel parked spot. It just, everything's going by, but I am not driving while doing this, that would be crazy. But yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. I'll try to film when I get in there if it's big enough and people like leave me alone. So walking in, you walk straight into their sales section. So they have stuff as low as 25 cents per yard. Um, this is clearly stuff that just hasn't sold on their website. I really wish I took more footage in here, but um, the way this whole operation works, there were employees everywhere. So I didn't feel comfortable like filming everything, but there were rooms upon rooms upon rooms of fabric, um, all stacked up. Uh, it was not like it was organized, but it wasn't organized. So basically you had to find a fabric you were looking for and find its code online. And then that would tell you where it was located. Uh, so here I'm touring through their downstairs. They also had a back room. I don't even take you through. They had an upstairs and then they had two giant warehouse rooms all filled with fabric. It was pretty wild. This is one that I like. Um, and then over here, I also liked this one. Both of those were ones that I left. I decided I didn't need them and I am very happy with that decision. They were pretty, but I didn't need them. All right, first fabric store down. Um, that place was crazy. If you're ever ordering from Fabric Mark, like send a little prayer looking at them. They were so busy. Uh, and they were saying how the whole website was 90% off or something like that. And they were all cutting fabric like crazy. And there were probably like, 10 people um, filling orders back there. It was pretty wild. So yeah, think think about them when you order. Um, and now they have kind of like a processing time disclaimer and now it makes a ton more sense. And that place is huge. There were three levels and five, six, seven, eight rooms. I didn't even make it through all the rooms. Uh, at the end, I kind of just went on their site and looked for what I was looking for because it was kind of hard to figure out like they don't have anything sorted by like content type or anything like that. So it was kind of just hard to like navigate the store without using their website is what I found. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about all my purchases and I'm excited to show them. Uh, I spent way too much money. We're gonna be above budget on this trip, but what can you do? We are at Zinx. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a cornfield behind me. So gorgeous here all the farms and stuff, but yeah, I'm gonna go into sinks. I'm gonna try to not buy anything. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of try to look because I spent way too much at, at Fabric Mart. And so because I spent so much at Fabric Mart, I am going to try to be very moderate here. And so basically only if there's really good price silk and wool is the goal. So we'll see. Wish me luck. Alrighty, here we are in Zinx. This is the homespun room. I can't believe I thought I was not going to spend money here. I forgot that this room here is the main reason I came. Um, homespun is a really cool fabric type. Uh, these are really beautiful plaids. There's also a lot of solids in the room, but basically what they mean is they were made the way fabrics were made when they were well homespun. Um, even though these are not homespun technically, they are made in the same techniques, which means the plaids are equally vibrant on both sides, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, this room was crazy and I bought so many plaids and I'm so happy about all of them. Um, and then here is their main like quilting cotton room. They had so many quilting cottons. Um, I was pretty good here. Uh, I actually feel pretty confident in my ability to buy these online well, so I didn't feel I need to pick them up. I did buy one batik from this room, um, but it is huge. Uh, and this is literally just the front two rooms when you walk in. Um, here now we are back into their warehouses. Uh, I could not make sense totally of what fabric was where. I think these are all upholstery fabrics in this room here. Um, it was huge. I don't know. I've just, I've never really seen anything like this in my lifetime because I don't live places with really big fabric warehouses. Uh, so that was the upholstery side. And now we're going over to what I assumed was garments. I was reading through labels here 
and it felt like everything here was pretty polyester based um, so I didn't really pick up much. Uh, these here is another room over so you could buy all these bolts like uncut um, and so basically if you bought a bolt you would have to buy everything on it and then over here there's even more. Um, I didn't really find any wool or silk in here, but you can see over here they have a lot of colors of tulle. I was tempted. I should have come in here with some better projects in mind. Over here was some printed, I think these were all like garment cottons as opposed to those. And then you can just see the like massive space this is in. Um, we also had so many glittery fabrics. I just had to show you I love sparkly fabric. I didn't buy any. I was pretty good. I thought that one was really pretty. Um, but I, I don't have a need really to make stuff with sparkly fabrics. I really wish I sewed in high school and could have made my own like prom dress from something like this. Uh, I thought that was really pretty. Um, and then they also had a bunch of laces. And then, yeah, just so much fabric. Uh, I just had to take you on a grand tour through all the sparkly fabric. So this is the bottom shelf of the sparkly fabric table. Um, it's so pretty. Uh, I just can't believe... All of these fabrics are just like here and sitting here waiting to be bought. Um, and then we're going now at the tour over the top. Uh, it's so sparkly. It's so pretty. And I love it so, so much. Uh, like I said, didn't need any sequin fabric. I don't know what I would do with this. And I've never sewn with sequins and I'm not really interested. But it was definitely still really, really cool. Um, look at that one. The multicolor. Mm. This here was their flat lay section. So this was their sales section. And I think they were just selling basically what was left on the bolts. Uh, these had like different amounts and they were all $3.99 per yard and these are really high quality quilting fabric so it was a pretty good deal so I did pick up a couple of their like pre-made flat lay packs um, and I'm really excited about the two I picked up. There were a lot that I really liked that I left like this one I liked a lot um, and that one I did too but I ended up going with the actual yardage. I think this was really really cool. Um, I got a bunch of homespun. I forgot that that's why I was going there is they have a homespun room um, and they had just so many gorgeous choices there. So I picked up a few of those and then um, I picked up some cottons on sale and yeah, the shop was so cool. I loved that shop. I think I liked that one more than Fabri Fabric Mart. Um, just because with Fabric Mart in the future, if, that, if I'm in the area, of course I would go, but I think I would go ahead and like do other things and drive a little less out of the way to get to Fabric Mark just because they really have everything they have online in store uh, and it's really hard to find stuff in store and they don't even have stuff labeled by like content type so it just I don't know it was a little bit frustrating but Zinx Zinx was fantastic and I loved it okay so you have seen the footage uh, I think I've mentioned kind of the comparison between the two stores I would go to Zinx again I would nece not necessarily go to Fabric Mart again. It's not that it wasn't great, it's just they had everything on their site there, and their site is way easier to navigate than their store. So, nothing against them, I just, I definitely will shop with them online, and if I end up in the area again, they're gonna be less high on my destination list. But let's first look at what I bought there at Fabric Mart. First thing is this really lovely border print cotton. Um, I don't own that many border prints and I haven't worked with that many and I've never had enough of a yardage to make a dress from it so I'm really excited to give this a go. This is just basically a simple quilting cotton. I had been looking on their site at a while, for a while at it and it's nice and high quality. I believe this was $7.50 a yard. Um, and then next I have a rayon. Let me figure out how to open it up for you guys. They folded it inside out so here you can kind of see it. It's just this really lovely mustard and blue rayon. Um, I really like this rayon. It's very like dull of a fabric choice for me, but I think it'll make a really beautiful 1940s dress. Uh, so next up we have this really lovely like, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of a clown print. Uh, like I forget what this is called. Uh, it's a diamondy print. Um, but basically I thought this was really pretty. Uh, I was looking at their swimsuit fabrics online and this one was my favorite and they happen to have it in store. So I did pick it up. I'm going to use the 1940 swimsuit pattern that I made a few videos ago. Um, I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna make this into it. And I think it'll be really cute and since it'll be full swimsuit material, it'll be just a tad bit more functional for me. Oh uh, yeah, we'll do this one next. This, it's really hard to show you what this is, but this is just like a really, really, really dark gray uh, Georgette, I believe. Um, it's a little bit sheer, but it is silk. This was 
My sec actually my most expensive is the last fabric. This was, I believe, $10 a yard. Uh, I don't get opportunity to buy silk very often, so I went ahead and picked it up while I was there. Uh, all of these things are things I probably wouldn't have ordered online and I only got if I was there. So that kind of adds to the like, in retrospect, I might not stop by there just because I would rather be more intentional about my fabric picking. This will be for another 1940s piece uh, and I think it'll look really great for that. Oh, I thought there was a bug on it. Next up is this really lovely, it's a light blue linen. Um, this is such soft and like nice high quality linen. I believe it was $15 a yard, which is cheap for linen. It felt spendy for me. Uh, this was the most expensive yardage of them all. Um, and I just thought it was so beautiful. I love like the very variation in it. And I'm really excited to make hopefully a really simple and well tailored dress from it. Um, so stay tuned for that. And now we're on to Zinks. I loved Zinks. As long as they always have a homespun room, I will always want to stop by there. I did not think they had as good of a variety of other natural fibers. However, I just might have navigated their store poorly, um, but I really enjoyed being in Zinks. I mainly got this fabric cottons there, um, but I did get, there's this really cute pair, pair of scissors. I should show this up close to you guys. They're just little embroidery scissors and they have, they're green with like little tiny daisies on them. And I think they're so cute. Uh, I lost my favorite pair of embroidery scissors here that I believe um, Eureka Monograms she sent me. Um, I can't find them. I think they're maybe in my couch cushions and I probably need to take a second peek. But I could also probably use a second pair of scissors, especially as I'm looking to start commuting. And when I commute, I would like to have my hand sewing ready for my commute. I feel like that's a really good use of my time there. Uh, next up is this really lovely batik. Uh, I, they had just some really, really pretty batiks, but I liked this one the best. Um, I can see it being a really, really beautiful fall dress. Um, like I think it would be so pretty in fall with like short sleeves or three quarter sleeves or something like that. Uh, I think it will be really pretty. I just noticed there's a spot on it, but I'm sure that'll wash out. It might have been from traveling. This was, I believe, $4.99 a yard. Um, that's the other thing. Zinx was so cheap. Uh, it's like a fabric clearance warehouse thing, so I shouldn't be surprised it's so cheap, but it was pretty cheap. Ooh, it's getting brighter and brighter in here. Um, next up, this fabric is like oddly stiff, but I'm sure that stiffness will wash out, I hope. Uh, otherwise, I don't really know what I'm gonna use this for and I'll probably have to donate it. Uh, it's like stiff like a board, but it's really pretty. Um, I really like this fabric. I'm hoping, yeah, once I wash it, it just kind of like loosens up because I can't imagine it really being anything but a quilting cotton. This was $3.99 a yard, I believe. Um, this was in their sale section. They had this section where they had a bunch of flat lays that basically were like the remnants of a bolt. And so this was one of them. And I think it's so pretty and I really hope it de-stiffens and I can make a really, really beautiful dress out of it. Uh, another one from their flat lay sale section. Wow, it's getting brighter and brighter by the minute. Um, is this really, really lovely? yellow fabric with, it has like darker yellow polka dots and then these really, really beautiful roses. I thought this was so pretty and I really liked it. Um, it's like very feminine and soft and it'll make such a beautiful 1950s dress. And so I'm super excited to use this fabric and it had five yards and this was also, like I said, in their flat lay section. So it was $3.99 per yard, which I think was a great deal. So I'm pretty excited about that. I have a nose itch. Um, so yeah, that's that one. And then we are diving into homespuns now. I am so excited about this. Uh, their homespun room was hands down my favorite part and why I would return again and again and again. It's pretty hard to find homespun online from what I've looked. Uh, there's not a ton of it on Etsy. And if you Google it, like I'm just skeptical if they're like actual homespuns. Like I said in the tour, uh, these homespuns are not like technically like home woven, but they are manufactured using those techniques. So they have the double sided color to them. Um, so like here's, here's an edge. Uh, as you can see, there's like the same color on each side. Uh, there's like no right side, which will not actually make this be the funnest for sewing, but what can you do? Um, so I got four and a half yards of each of these and these were priced at $5.99 a yard, which for the quality of fabric felt really, really good. Um, I have a random string of something else on here. Um, so this first one is like my most normal one. I bought this to make kind of like an all purpose normal dress uh, for days where I need to be a little bit less um, over the top. Cause occasionally, you know, you have things like 
presentations or interviews or stuff where like I just might not want to be 100% extra um, because I want to be taken a little bit more seriously. Uh, and so I did pick this up for that because I think it's a really lovely color. Um, it has this really lovely teal stripe with these pink and white and blue. So I also think while it would be a good like normal dress for me, it will also be super cute because I can pull teal, pink, and white accessories with it, which I think will make it a little bit more fun and a little bit more me. Uh, next up we have another homespun. Uh, this one's super soft. I'm super excited to make something with this. Uh, it's just this really lovely teal and green and pink and purple plaid. Uh, this one just makes me think of Easter. Um, I really liked their plaids, so I'm kind of picky about plaids because I grew up in school uniforms and we had like our school plaid and that was like not a good time period for me. So like I, I'm pretty repulsed by plaids generally. And so I really love homespun pla plaids because there's just like a vibrance or a life or a texture to them that you don't see in other plaids. Um, Cause I feel like I've pretty rarely hauled fl plaid fabrics and here are a ton. Um, the other thing with these is plaids are really hard to work with and these feel like they'll just be a little bit easier. Um, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I really like this one. This is like, yeah, like I said, a very beautiful Eastery plaid. I don't celebrate Easter, but if I did, I would wear that plaid. This one here is a, another really pretty plaid. I think this one would be really pretty for fall. Uh, it's like has greens, purples, and blues in it, um, but it's really, really very like, I guess like pinky purple to it. Um, I think this is so gorgeous. Again, it's four and a half yards and I'm really excited to make something with it. I think this is going to be so pretty. And then we're down to my last two. This is another one. This is another like I would say like more normal person fabric. Uh, it's just a really lovely. So the main base of this is navy and then it's green and red um, or green and pink depending on the lighting. I feel like right now it's looking pretty green and red to me, but the lighting right now has been all over the place. It keeps being bright and dark and bright and dark. Uh, but this is a really beautiful plaid and I'll probably make something a little bit more fall and winter out of this one as well. I feel like I have some like good spring plaids. The one more serious dress, I'm gonna make a more neutral um, like seasonally. And then this one, yeah, I can make kind of more fall. And then last up would be another like spring summer plaid for me. Um, this is a really, really beautiful like rainbow plaid. Uh, it's primarily made up of yellow, blue, and orange. Um, and I think pink maybe, um, but it might just be like a brighter shade of red. I just thought this plaid was so cool. I saw it in the store and I just like had to have it. Um, I think this will make a really, really, really fun spring and summer dress. Um, I think it will also transition well into fall and winter, but it will, I will make it for primarily fall. I mean, spring, summer. Um, but that actually completes this fabric haul. Um, I enjoyed going to these shops so much. I hope you guys enjoy seeing the footage. Uh, I loved being in stores with so much fabric and also with a ton of people who I could also tell were garment makers. And I would highly recommend Zinx if you're ever in the Lancaster area. I believe there's also one in Ohio, but I don't know if they have a homespun room. Like, I don't know if that's unique to that Zinx location, um, but I loved it. Uh, I love the homespun and I wish I could, well, I don't wish I could exclusively sew with homespun, but I did really enjoy looking at their homespuns. If I make it back there next time, I'll probably try to be good and get some solids as well and slow down a little on the plaids because I, in theory, only need so many plaid dresses. Well, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, like I said, I think this is gonna be the second installment of my Lancaster trip. So there is going to be four installments. One is fabric, two is thrifting, and one is antiquing. So stay tuned for all of those. They're super fun. They'll all be kind of in this format. So yeah, definitely if you, that interests you, stick around and subscribe. I would love to have you. I am trying to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. I feel like, not that I'm close, close, but I'm getting there. And so I could definitely use your help for that. And I will see you next time. Bye.